Melody Vassal's Top 100 Games of All Time. Melody Vassal's Top 100 Games of All Time. Once again, we're here to talk about the Top 100 Games of Melody! My name is Melody Vassal. I'm 11 years old. We're going to be talking about my Top 100 favorite games that are better than my dad's. What? <laughs> and here we go. Number 50, Formula D. Formula D is a racing game, very, very popular racing game in which you roll different dice depending on which gear you're in. You're trying to hit the corners uh, just right so that you can go around them without flying off. It's a fun game and a lot of people can play at the same time. Uh, this game is really fun. Um, Formula D is a really cool racing game to me and all the characters, they have, at least some of them have special abilities. The, I really like the art, the, I forget what it's called, but. The graphic design? Yeah, but it's really, really good, especially the track, the background on the track, it's amazing. Number 49, Survive. Survive is a game in which players uh, are on Atlantis and it's sinking slowly and you have all these people, you're trying to get them off the island to other islands that are not sinking. Uh, meanwhile, there's sharks, whales, octopuses, giant octopuses, octopi, or giant squid, I'm sorry, uh, sea monsters all going after your people. Uh, whoever gets the most people basically off is the winner. I like this game because you're just with me to an island and... I think it's pretty cool of how they have like points on the bottom of them and I've never had a person die yet because of a sea monster or a shark but it's a really good game. I'll fix that. Number 48, Flip Out. Flip Out is almost like a phase 10 style game in which you have two colored cards. They have different colors on the back and the front. You have them facing you. You're trying to get like three or four of the same color in a row. You can switch them with your opponent, turn them around, mix them up until you get the right ones. They're not always the same, the different color on both sides. Sometimes they're the same. Right. Well, that's true. Uh, and But you can see with the backs of your opponents, and you can see the fronts of your own, and you're trying to, to get it to be in the right order. Oh. <laughs> I like flip out because the colors are cool. And I just like to win the game most of the time. And it's kind of hard because you can't see the back ow, of yours and the front of the uh, opponent. Opponent, um, But it's really fun. Really good. Awesome game. Number 47, Berga Pencil. This game is actually a really neat one uh, in which you take the box and you take everything out of the box and then, well the box has this plastic grid on it and you put different pieces on top and you have these mice that are running across trying to collect cheese. But you're constantly pushing these little uh, tiles in and some of the tiles have holes in and if that goes underneath your mouse well then he falls to his doom and doesn't get the cheese. So there's some memory, trying to remember where the cheese are, trying to maneuver them so that other people's mice fall into the holes and then simply a race game trying to get the cheese and uh, back as fast as you can. I like this game because the most part I like about it is because you're trying to trap the other person's, person's mouth. <laughs> like putting the uh, mouth underneath the hole is pretty fun and getting the cheese is amazingly fun and I just love this game. Number 46, etc. Etc. is tic-tac-toe basically, except there's only three pieces. You put a piece out, you put a piece out, you put a piece out. Each person does that, it's going to be a tie. And then 
You take your piece number one and you must move it to a new spot. Then the other person takes the piece mark number two, moves it to a new spot. Eventually, someone's going to win. It says on the box, there will always be a winner. <laughs> um, this is a good game if you're kind of bored. And also... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm sorry, go ahead. Instead of playing it on paper, you can just take it out and play it like that because it's a lot more fun because if you don't get one thing that you, like one row that you wanted, you could just move your pieces around getting all different types of ways. And I may not beat my sisters, but I can beat my dad. What? Number 45, Alec Carte. Carte is a game about cooking, uh, where you take little shakers and you dump them out, hoping not to get too much salt into your food, yeah. trying to cook the correct food, flipping pancakes. It comes with little dishes. It's a very toy factor game, and the expansion came out, which added even more stuff to it this year. That's a la carte. A la carte is really cool because you add the things and Every time when my sister and I aren't playing the game, we just like pretend we're actually cooking because it's so toy-like. Um, the food is really weird. Um, like a trunk and... Oh, oh elephant, elephant trunk. trunk? I've eaten one of them. Raw? No. Anyway. <laughs> and it's just a really weird but amazing game. Number 44, Dungeonators. Dungeon Raiders is a card game uh, in which you're going into a dungeon. Surprise! But it's really not about uh, defeating monsters. I mean, there's monsters, but it's playing the right card at the right time. And because you, once you play a card, you can't play that card again until you've played all your other cards. So sometimes you want to play your best card to avoid being beaten by a monster. Other times you want to play a good card to get a good treasure. So it's trying to guess when the other players are going to play cards and when to play the right card as you go into each room and fight, face a trap or a monster or a treasure. It may sound like a boring game, but when you play it, it's really, really fun. Um, just fighting the monsters. I usually have a hard time even trying to survive the whole game. Um, <laughs> um, and the characters, the sea, the rogue, the knight. Uh, it's just a really good game. Number 43, Flipping Out. Okay, this isn't a repeat. Earlier we talked about flip out. Now we're talking about flipping out. Flipping out is a party game in which there's letters all over the table, and you say, name something that starts, you know, name something, and you flip over a letter and say something that starts with that letter you flipped over. And people keep doing it until you can't think of a word that starts with any of the letters that hasn't been flipped over. So if I say name a kind of animal and you see uh, P, you can flip over that for panda bear. Oh. Someone else says lion, uh, you I know, for L. Me. Well, true, but there's all different sorts of animals, and that's how the game works. This game is better for, an, again, for like a whole type of same mental type of group because if you're playing with some younger kids and an adult, then the, the adult will have an advantage because the, the adult can think of things faster than the little ones because then they'll not know and get really upset. But... It's, it's a really good game though, just naming stuff from the first letter, and amazing, really good. Number 42, Livingston. Livingston is a game about the explorer, David Livingston, uh, explorer missionary, as he went to Africa, and basically in this game, you have to search for jewels in this bag where there's different jewels, and some of them are more valuable than the others. You have to make sure you give enough money to the queen, or else at the end, if you don't, you'll lose. And you have to set up different camps along the way to get points. It's a very Euro-y game, uh, but it has some good aspects, and it works together in a fun expedition-style way. I like how, how they put it in orders like that um the tents are pretty cool the artwork yeah that's really good i like how they base it on a missionary david livingstone and all right but it's good number 41 cat and fish cat 
and Fish is a game in which you are cats who are fishing, and it's like a worker placement game where each time you put a worker out, you get to do different things, but you're moving your cats around outside in the sea and fishing. The farther out you get, the more difficult it is to catch the fish, but if you do, you're catching whales and gigantic fish. Inside you might catch boots and things that aren't worth so much. And certain fish are worth different points depending what season it is in. That's a very innovative, neat little game. Um, unfortunately, it was only produced in Korea that I know of. <laughs> Um, this game is amazing because it's about the whirlpools, tornadoes, I think, or it was a storm, I can't remember. But just putting the cats out on the worker board, it was amazing. It was you keep saying that word. Sorry, but it's my new word for today. Ah. Word for the day. But, um, just, uh, I love this game. It's so unspeakable. Well, that's it. We have walked into the top 50 games. Starting next week, we will get into numbers 40 through 31. So we're getting pretty close to the top. We're talking about the best of the best of the best of the best. Well, not really. It's the best of the worst because they're Melody's top 100. But, you know, I get hit. We're recording this for posterity, you know. Someday people will see how much you hit me. Anyway, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. And I'm Melody. And you can check out a better top 100 list of mine at thedicetower.com. Melody Vassal's top 100 games of all time.